It is Monday, April 27th, year of our Lord, 2020. Welcome to Straight From The Hip. I'm your host, Coach Gerald Boone Mitchell, coming to you live from Sugar Hill, Georgia. Here with my co-host, Mr. Jason Allen and Mr. Travis Butler, coming to you from Parts Unknown. Hello, Joe Madden, how are you? I see you out there, Joe. I think you just turned your camera off. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Madden has a show too, Jason. She does a sports show. And so uh, I'm, I'm glad to have her on here because she wanted to kind of see what we do with ours. Uh, anyway, a lot to talk about today. Uh, we're always going to start like we always do uh, since it began. We're going to start talking about the last dance. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, you know, we're talking about Chicago Bulls and, uh, and the amazing run that they had uh really really appreciate uh i'm, I'm appreciating this I, i'm loving this i think it's the best two hours of, of television every week but uh jake let's start with you give me your take on uh on the on the last two episodes episode three and four uh let's see episode three with rodman my hot take is no superstar in this day martin day and era could get away with taking a week to go to Vegas <laughs> and party, take shots, and hang out with Carmen Electra. And Carmen Electra's still fine. I still hang out with her right now. So <laughs> I just thought that was my first hot take. My second <clears throat> hot take was um, I know we always talk about how tenacious Jordan is and his leadership and et cetera, but this, especially part four, three and four, really showed how much of a leader Jordan is. One, in going to Vegas and getting Rodman's butt back <laughs> to Chicago to play. <laughs> Two, also him understanding with Phil that he would have to change his way of playing to be able to win championships, going to the triangle instead of the ball-centric offense he was used to with Doug Collins. And I know he showed frustration on the show, but I, it never seemed like in any eclipse that he showed frustration towards his other players, knowing to have to, like, go to that new system. So I definitely thought those two huge attributes of Jordan's leadership were on full display. Travis, what'd you get in episode three? Yeah, episode three, definitely just, uh, you know, Rodman's craziness and all the, the the lunatic things that he did, not just with the Bulls, but when, you know, how everyone thinks he was this crazy guy, but he really didn't, at least in, portrayed in the documentary, he really didn't uh, do much craziness until he kind of got to San Antonio and started dyeing his hair and then got to Chicago and really started, you know, vamping everything up. So, um, you know, just all the crazy things that he was doing, but still was able to uh, outrun and be better uh, of a conditioned athlete than pretty much every other player on the team was outrunning people at practice even from coming off of a 80 hour bender in, in Vegas. So. Yeah, I know, uh, I, I know that, uh, what I took from it all was, uh, you know, especially episode three. I mean, everybody knows that Dennis Rodman was Dennis Rodman. I think, uh, you know, knowing a little bit more about his background, I know that Rodman was, uh, you know, really kind of a shy person. Isaiah Thomas talked about it when he was interviewed and said that, uh, you know, I didn't know Dennis as a drinker and all of those things I saw in the video because Dennis didn't drink, Dennis didn't smoke, Dennis didn't do any of those things when he was with us, when he was a Piston. You know, I, that happened after he left us because he was kind of quiet, reserved, very businesslike, and that was the Dennis that we knew. So, uh, so in any event, what I liked about it was a. Uh, I appreciate the relationship that we learned that was had between Phil Jackson and uh, and, and Dennis Rodman. I, I thought that that was that was very comforting to me. Um, you know, Michael Jordan was kind of more like the Big Brother deal or whatever. But I really liked the fact that uh, that that you know Phil Jackson had was the mentor, but kind of had that Big Brother deal with him, and I, I thought that was good to see. 
I like the fact, and I'll say this again, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I like the fact that it's uncut and, you know, you can hear the passion, like when they showed Ron Harper and his disgust with the fact that they wouldn't let him guard Jordan. And they, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he had a few choice words to say about that. <laughs> so uh, so I, I appreciate the fact that it's uncut. I think that uh, that does a big uh, – uh, really helps the show. Um let me ask you this question, about, Jason, and I'll we start talked with about, you. Uh, earlier about the Isaiah and them walking off without the handshake, and I was saying that for me, that was new information to hear. I guess the Celtics did that to the Pistons originally, and I guess the Pistons were, I guess, turn around this fair play, did it to the Bulls. Uh, did anybody feel like that maybe put that whole situation in better perspective historically than what we've had it presented to us before that moment last night? No, Jordan, the fact that Jordan said we shook y'all hand two years in a row when y'all beat our behind, yep. we should get the same respect. I agree. You know what I'm saying? That's what that is. I okay. agree, Peavy. That, that's the way I kind of felt about it. Anybody else? Miss Peavy, what did you think about that? I agree with what OJ said. They should have gave them the same respect that they gave them, so – and I feel vice versa when Celtics walked off too. They should have gave the, the Pistons their respect as well. I agree. I, I just think that that's part of the game. In the GFL, if you don't shake hands after the game, you get suspended or you get fined <laughs> or whatever. You get a $2,000 fine. <laughs> <laughs> because that is part of the game. So, I um, like I said, I, I'm big on that, and I, I just – I just think that that's just kind of a uh, customary thing that needs to be done all the time. And when it's not done, then then I have a problem with it. So anyway, let, let's talk about uh, episode four, which really focused on the the competition between the Chicago Bulls and the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, you know, really showed episode three really showed kind of the, the pitfalls that he had to endure um you know especially as, as a as a younger player but as a leader and leading his team to 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 beat the the the, the nemesis of the pistons and when they finally got that hurdle and they finally were able to do that they were able to uh win the win the title off of magic which was another you know big hurdle because that was kind of a maybe a little bit of passing of the torch from you know the 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 best player in the '80s, who you know who was, who was the up and coming best player of the you know at that time and going in the night. Right. Well, what I really liked about this part was, you know, I'm I, this is back when I was a big time basketball fan. I mean, I was Michael. I mean, I, I was all into basketball at this time, and uh, you know, I I remember the the rivalry that they had uh, between the the Pistons and the Bulls and some of the best, you know, basketball hatred, if you will, that existed at, in that era was between these two teams. And, uh, I, you know, I was somewhat surprised as I watched it today, hearing Isaiah Thomas kind of talk about it and whatnot. And uh, I think he was intrigued by what he's seen as far as, you know, what's happened and, and, and what he might have thought was happening and what actually is – or or what actually did happen from the documentary. And uh, I mean, even hearing him talk about today, hearing Jordan talk about last night, it's just that good old down home hatred for your rival. And I mean, they truly were rivals. And uh, Isaiah spent most of the day in interviews I saw belittling the Bulls and, and their accomplishments saying, well, you know, you, you took three of our players off our team and put them on your team. And, you know, we were the, we were the master. You know, you were the student. We taught you all our tricks. You took three people off our team, put them on your team. So basically, rebuilt our team over there with you. And that's why you were finally able to achieve the greatness that we achieved. And, uh, you know, he was just really belittling the success of the Bulls, and uh, and I mean again, I you know I, I don't be I don't think anything bad about Isaiah from that because I know how he genuinely hates the Bulls, 
And uh, so, like I said, it was uh, – and, and, of course, you know, him and Jordan are going back and forth with each other to this day. And so, uh, so like I said, it was, it was really good, good uh, to me anyway. I like also the commentary about that. Jordan was cursing at the reporters because all the reporters said that they would never beat the Cavaliers. And so, uh, again, that was kind of the stuff that me and I guess Mr. P were talking about there that kind of makes it uh, fun for us because that was some of the behind the scenes stuff that was never reported before. I didn't know that before uh, nobody thought that they could really win or whatever. So, I mean, did you yeah. see the the politically correct shade MJ tried to put on Scotty with the migraines? He go, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he said he had a migraine. So, I mean, what, what more do you want me to say? I was like, oh, MJ, politically, politically correct shade he just threw there. My whole thing is, is that what can you say? I mean, I've been in that same situation with guys, you know, who I, I might have felt like, dude, you, you, you need to suck this up. <laughs> I mean, we got to play. Yeah, I'm surprised Jordan didn't bring up the flu game to uh, kind of put some more uh, hate on, on Pippen right there. Well, you still got six episodes left. So I think you'll see the flu game before it's all said and done. So, I mean, on a scale of one to ten, how good is this documentary? Does everybody feel so far? Ten being great, one being crap. Oh, 10. Oh, 10. Wow. Oh, I, okay. People give it a 10. Mary Butler, do you want to give us an answer? <laughs> Giving it a 10. 10. Wow. Hey, two 10s out the game. Wow. Okay. All right, let's talk to uh, Travis. Travis, what do you think? I'm not, I'm not giving it a 10. I'll say that. Um, for what it is right now, the top, the first four episodes so far, I'll give it about a 7 or an 8. Okay, I'll take that, Jason. Uh, I, I know y'all gonna kill me. I'm giving it a six right now, man. It's a lot of little nuggets in there I like, but for me, the the pinnacle of all documentaries like this is gonna be OJ Made in America, which I give ten out of ten every episode. One and two were good, and in this one, I thought it was a little better. It was like more of a seven, so I'm falling right into that six right now. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm with everybody, the, the, the people who did it. I'm a 10. It, it, I'm, I'm a 12, as a matter of fact. I love it. I mean, I, I just, it, it's real. It, it's just so real to me because, and it does fill in some holes. You know, like, like Mr. Peavy alluded to, you know, a lot of things we kind of might have wondered about and thought about or whatever the case may be. Hearing everybody talk about it now, like seeing the relationship between Scotty and Michael, or between uh, Michael and the team, or whatever the case may be. Because I'll be honest with you, I, I thought, and maybe it might happen later, that there might have been a whole lot more disconnection between Michael and the team. But it seems like, just like he said, it's not like Michael sent a bodyguard to go get Rodman. He went to go get Rodman himself. Yeah, hell, Vegas, for all we man. know, Jordan was in Vegas gambling. That's why he got him. Oh, that exactly. one was. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Also, too, are we giving up tens because it ain't nothing else on TV but this shit? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Jason, y'all had to grow up in the era to give it a ten. To really appreciate what you're seeing now. Don't say that, Miss Peter, because I get beat up whenever y'all aren't around. For that very reason that we grew up in that era and we, <laughs> this was basketball. I don't even watch basketball anymore. And I have to say, you guys, I'm sorry, but I haven't watched it. So I'm Joe, kind of lost. you I'm haven't sorry. watched it, The Last Dance? I haven't. Oh my now gosh. I have to. Joe, we're going to have to have an offline conversation about that. <laughs> it is a great show. <laughs> <laughs> See, they got okay. you hyped telling you it's tens. You're going to be like, oh, it's okay. It's cool. And then they, put, <laughs> they put the expectations so high for you, telling you it's 10 out of 10. You're going to be riveting. You'll be like, oh, this was dope. But I mean, 10? Really? As long as you guys promise it's not as stupid as the Tiger King, I will check it out. <laughs> oh, oh no. It, it's way better than that. No. <laughs> Don't get us started on the Tiger King. <laughs> I'm going to poll to see if we think that uh, Carol Baskin killed her first husband. Oh, she definitely killed that joker. Oh, killed him. She yeah. killed that what joker. I agree. She killed him. 
Oh my God, that is awful. <laughs> well, we're gonna get a sequel to Tiger King. It's gonna be Joe Barrow getting embarrassed as the Cincinnati Bengals. So hey, 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 which is our next topic that we're gonna talk about. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna let Travis because for those of you who do not know, Travis is a diehard Cincinnati Bengal fan. Yeah. I mean, why that is, I mean, only he knows. I mean, good God, am I there one of the worst franchises in the NFL, only behind maybe Cleveland and Atlanta. But, Travis, uh, talk about your draft. I mean, what would you think about what you guys did? I loved it. I, I, I loved our draft. I thought we got exponentially better. Uh, of course, our first pick, Joe Burrow, number one overall. We have a franchise quarterback. Our second pick, T. Higgins, uh, is A.J. Green 2.0 and got him in the second round. Could have, Should have probably went in the first round. And then we got three linebackers, which we haven't had any good linebackers since Vontez Perfect. And so I've been screaming for linebacking help for the last two or three years, and we ended up getting three of them. Two out of the three probably should have been second round draft picks, and they got were but one was a third and one was a fourth round pick. So I loved our draft. I, I'll give it a uh, an A, A minus, not an A plus, wow. but yeah. I, wow. I might even go a, on A minus. I might even go yeah. comment on that trash Travis just said. Travis, don't you think you guys should have taken Chase Young? Amen. That's the thing I said. Yeah, I, I, I would I have taken him in a heartbeat if I was you guys. Well, well, then you're, we're stuck with Andy Dalton again, and we needed a new quarterback. If we take Chase Young, and I get that, and I know Jason and I, you know, you and I had this conversation. If you take Chase Young, you're stuck with Dalton again, which he's not the future. We've seen that, and you're kind of hoping that next year that all these quarterbacks like Trevor Lawrence, like a Justin Fields come out, which they may or may not. And then you hope that you're one of the top two or three picks again to draft them because everyone knows they're going to be getting taken. So take the quarterback right now and make it better. Well, Trevor Lawrence doesn't have a choice, does he? Yeah, Trevor Lawrence coming out regardless. I mean, he's only got one more year. What do you mean he might come out, he might not? Oh, he's saying he may duck the Bengals. That's what he's saying. Yeah. (laughs) Trevor Lawrence may be like, nah, bruh. I'm going to exactly. take a red shirt after I graduate. <laughs> oh, so y'all wanted to get the Ohio kid? Is that what it was? Yeah, and we got to sell tickets. We got to sell jerseys. We got to make some money. I mean, it, yeah, it, but it, you know, it. go ahead, Joe. I was just going to say, I think Dalton didn't have enough weapons last season, right? So many injuries on the offense. I think you guys should have given him one more chance this year. I, I mean, really you know, do. Give the bottom line is. Chances. The bottom line is, when you're Andy Dalton, you can't have enough weapons. I mean, you you can give him you can give him forty receivers. He it it, it, it doesn't matter. Coach, I mean, that's the smartest you know, thing you've said tonight. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I mean, Travis has a lot more faith in Andy Dalton than anybody. He has more faith in Andy Dalton than Andy Dalton has in Andy Dalton. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, but but listen, look. Travis, you're gonna be the you're gonna be better this year than you were last year, and you're still gonna be the worst team in the worst division in football. I mean, you are gonna be the worst of the worst again. I mean, and, 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 and you know what? You're okay with that because you're gonna be a little bit better. And so, therefore, as a fan, you 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 still gonna be a Cincinnati fan. Because you're just a little bit better. Well, hey, guys, at least we got better. And guess what? We get the first pick again this year. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, first off, the AFC North is not the worst division in football. So let's let's get that straight. So. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Cincinnati and Cleveland, I mean, <laughs> name one is worse. I, I will give you a nugget right here, though. My uh-huh. niece went to LSU. And she said she was around him quite a bit, you know, just because of classes and whatnot. And he ain't the, the sweet guy everybody thinks he is. She <laughs> said he's a big asshole. <laughs> and so I hope he gets exactly what he deserves in the NFL if he is that way, because that ain't going to be pretty. I can tell you that right now. I, I can think of a lot of quarterbacks that have been assholes that have been really good, too. So Okay. I'm glad. Like an asshole on draft day, that's for sure. 
<laughs> yeah, he did. He the, has nobody, we, we, he has that's a whole nother story right there, Ms. Peavy. <laughs> let me ask y'all this. Let me deviate just a minute from the script that we have. What did y'all think about the whole virtual draft thing? Because I'm hearing, and I was watching sports shows all day today, they said, like, more people tuned in for the draft this year than any other year, supposedly. Now, I don't know how that is, but that's what they were saying. The issue the with the virtual draft. Been on for the last month, so people are just trying to get some type of sporting uh, fixation on, so they had to watch something. The only issue with the virtual draft was, as a guy who edits this show and produces, like, a couple of shows, don't be showing the kids looking in with their headphones on, looking down at their cell phone when they get drafted. <laughs> like, hold the shot, wait till they celebrate, record it, and then replay it once they show it. So you can be like, oh, this was their reaction when he got drafted. The only one I had thought they had a real good reaction was um, when Ken Law got drafted by the Niners. His father had the best reaction. Yeah, he His showed father out. fell off the couch because he's a millionaire <laughs> now. He showed out. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them were just I like, like too, uh, I like the guy whose girlfriend tried to answer his phone. <laughs> <laughs> CD Lamb. C -D Lamb. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that reaction. <laughs> All, right, All right, folks. We got to get out of here. Listen, um, it, it's hard doing this, I know, in some ways, but we wanted to get the fan interaction back in it. I know we haven't done that in a couple weeks. So thank you, Joe. Thank you, Miss Peavy and Mr. Peavy. Joe has a show on. Joe, tell everybody about your show real quick before we get out of here. Brand new show coming up, the Joe Madden and Lady D show. So it's going to be absolutely incredible. We're on Instagram, Twitter. It's just mm -hmm. brand new. I'm hoping Friday we're going to go. So hey, just that's working out about. timing. All right, okay. Joe, we appreciate that. And I appreciate you being on the show. Hey, Miss Jerry, Peavy, shout to Jerry, Peavy. too. Thank I, know I saw Jason and Mama on here earlier. Uh, Travis, Mary Butler, thank you for tuning in. And, uh, guys, we'll see y'all next week. Good night, Miss Francis. Straight from the hip.